Jack in the Woods, episode one, officially. Um, I'm APZ, about paper Z. My Instagram is at the real APZ. I'm here with my friend Luis, on your Instagram and everything. Luis the photographer, I'll put it in the info. This is a project called Shack in the Woods um, podcast. Basically, I've been watching this guy, Adam22, for like a few years now, and I think he's pretty cool. And I decided I wanted to make my own podcast, and this is basically it. We're talking about yep. like, the <laughs> restaurant here, and my life as a line cook. Also, I can make um, music and do like a clothing brand called Bell Paper Zine. Right now, we're going to be doing all these on this platform called 8 Munch. So, follow 8 Munch on Instagram. So, Louise, to start, how are you doing today? Doing all right. Basically, I got work in less than an hour. Um, and I told him we'd be doing this podcast about two weeks ago. We said we'd have it done, but two weeks later, we get it done. That's how we roll. Um, <laughs> my bad. I just no, not even your bad. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for your time and thank you for doing this. Um, also, bro, thank you for being like just like a dope friend, bro. Like, you've been like holding it down for the boys for the time. You've been holding it down. Awesome man, shit. Like you picked me up from the airport and shit. Like you was a real motherfucking G. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trolling him. Me and APZ go way back, like. I remember the first day I met him, I was so excited to move here because we're out in the mountains. I'm from like the city pretty much, like the suburbs, uh, not so much the big city. And uh, I was like, hey man, you're like, oh, like, you're the only guy who's also for, like from Toronto, like around here. Like I you know, grew up like 40 up. minutes from Toronto. So I was like, yo, we have that in common. Like, how is it? And he's just like, not gonna lie, like I hate to bring bring you down, but like this place ain't it. And he was just in a shit mood. And I was like, oh, all right. Oh, yeah. and I, <laughs> I was that. like, all right. And then we ended up talking till like 3 a.m. And then did. before you know it, this guy's starting to film himself doing cooking videos and stuff today. He's got his passion. And then, and then he's like, all right, I'm heading to Muskoka, Ontario for the summer, one of the most beautiful places ever to go be like a uh, chef over there and basically run the, the taco restaurant. Shout out Coach Mike. And then, you know, we made we made a, a couple little like quick music videos, like super amateur quality, but we did them. APZ just to, get, just to build the habit. YouTube. Like when you first start going to the gym kind of thing. And, and then he, and then now he's back. So we're like, you know what? We said that we would do some shit together. So now we're doing it. it took me a couple of weeks. This guy's gotta wake me up out of bed like at like two p.m. because I go to bed super late, like we all till the morning. We all do. But finally, you know, we got it done. So hopefully, this is the start so of a good thing. Drink right now, my God. I hate you. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold I, too. I got it straight out of your fridge. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's it's pretty common for some people to show up to work, like hungover and all that, but I can't drink this. You shake it. I can't. Oh my god. <laughs> this straight this. I should open it near the laptop. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh, <laughs> back to back to the ground zero. Like. But like um but yeah, we're like, we're, yeah, as he was saying, we met, we were talking for like, till like 3 a.m. This guy's been on that, bro. He's been, he's been going back, and he's been my dog. I feel like I've been this guy forever. Like, I've only known him for almost a year now, but I feel like I've been with like forever, bro. You've been holding it down, I've been real deep. Fucking, shout out Cameron. He's, um, can't be here right now as well. It's one of the third, like, the third amigo we can call him. Um, yeah, fuck. So, yo, I want to ask you, like, what is the worst thing you'd say about, like, working in, like, the hospitality industry of the guy in a restaurant? The worst thing, I would say, is just, like, getting burnt out, and then... When you say burnt out, like, what do you mean? Uh, from overworking, uh, from doing stuff that isn't in your job description, which I'm sure have. Well, that's <laughs> why I'm a server, because... 
you know, the tip money definitely makes up for it. But right, you know, this the summer was crazy. It was making really good money, good hours. Um, and now it's like super dead. So we have all the time in the world and I'm making like less than minimum wage pretty much, even with the tips because just no hours. Saying hours, so, so to, to shorten that answer, you'd say hours is probably the worst part about working in the hospitality industry. It's either long hours or less hours. It's like yeah, you don't you don't either you never work a like regular much or if it's too little. Yeah, you never work like forty four hours and then on crazy overtime days you're working fifty hours. Like you're working like seventy eighty hours okay. when you're working overtime. And then this week I'm going to be working like if I'm lucky, honestly, twenty hours, which is pretty crazy. Uh, so we'll see. Um, what's the best thing you'd say about working in the hospitality industry? Uh, definitely, well, in my department, you meet a lot of people from around the world, mostly because we work at a hotel resort that's I like that kind of sure. world renowned. So um, the food's really good, obviously. Um, but I, I'd say that's the best part about working in the kitchen. I'm also in the kitchen. I drink like a fish. This beer's done. Um, but you get perspective. You get perspective. Like people. They humble you as well. Like sometimes you meet some shitty customers, and there's a lot of people they don't take that as a learning experience. And honestly, sometimes it isn't. Sometimes people just come here just to yell at people, like customers. But most of the time, I'm gonna say like 98% of client of clientele that comes in, you're meeting a lot of really good people, a lot of people with good perspective, a lot of good connections. Um, like every now and then, you'll meet someone. Like let's say they work at a winery over the Okanagan Valley. They're like, hey, here's my email, here's my Instagram, whatever. Whenever you come through, hit me up, and we'll make sure we treat you good uh, because you gave us good service today and stuff. And then they posted me, like, giving them the smoke portal fashion on on IG, and that was pretty cool. I wrote, people were messaging me, like, oh, you're famous, all this, and, like, we'll be here you know, obviously, you know, I'm not, but it was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> after that, fucking... What made you feel like you wanted to start to do photography? Photography, not as much. I'd say videography. I'd say to do stuff like this. I okay. I came to do some content, and I've had this camera for damn near three years. But like, what made you three start? Like, what was what was like? What was like? What did you like filming like people skateboarding or some shit or like 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 your brother? I think I know your brother does like music or something like that as well, right? Yeah, um, I like. Uh, filming people like performing, like artists. Okay. Um, so like you, you know, back home, um, before I met you, there was a lot of artists uh, that my, my brother was like whole network had. So uh, they do their own video shit. So they actually taught me how to use my camera and everything. So they got me started. They're like, oh, I have no idea how to use a camera. And they're like, all right, like you're our second body. Like you're our main second body. And then, you know, he let me use his camera because I didn't know how to use my camera, but he showed me kind of how to use his. And then eventually I had to use mine and just shit like that. It was good. Yo, that's sick. Honestly, like have someone that kind of knows the game and they kind of like give you a little groundwork. Yeah, so I got, like, I, build on I got that, a, right? a boost. A little boost. Yeah. yeah. Like that. What about you? What made you decide to start rapping and then? Rapping? Um, first time I started rapping that I can remember, I was like probably like fucking five or some shit. I was standing in front of my grandma's house and my uncle, my cousin, and I think like another one of my cousin's friends were like smoking a split. And I hit the split because I'm a G. And um, they were like rap. So I just started rapping. And then like fast forward, let's say two, three years, I'm like seven, eight. I'm like in this neighborhood called Jane and Finch. Um, I used to live there near this kind of community center. All the guys were out there just hanging out, and very similar situation. And I remember smoking the blunt, and they were like, "Yo, hit the blunt!" I hit the blunt, and I'm, this is the first rap I remember saying, right? I'm like, "Yo, smoking on this chronic got me spitting like Sonic Two Plus Two. You know that we on it." And everyone went crazy, and shit. Like I was like, "Damn, I could rap." And then like after that, like it kind of just kept going. Like I was in a group home. When I was a kid, like I was trying to say, hey, I got locked up for a little bit, but fuck all that. But I got locked up, and then I was in this group home, and this, I'll never forget this too, like, shout out Greg and, and Dwight. 
were in the car one day and one of the kids were like, you should rap. And I'm like, I can rap. And they're like, you can't rap. And they're like, rap. I'm like, give me something to rap about. And it's funny because you know me, I love fucking mayonnaise, man. I put mayonnaise on fucking everything. And then they're like, they're like, they're like mayonnaise. I'm like, no, I was like, yeah, you can rap about it. They're like mayonnaise. So I'm like, all right, bet. And I just started like, rapping about mayonnaise and they went crazy. And then like, which was kind of in my little book again. And another time, right, not like more smoking weed or nothing like that, but like, it kind of just grew. But like, I guess I'll tell you, so they're at a concert, the lake, like at the lake there was like this like big stage and shit, so someone was doing like a concert at, this, at the lake, right? And like, this lady was like, yo, can somebody rap, basically, and everyone was like, yo, he can rap, he can rap, he can rap, and they all came running up to me, and there was this big ass crowd, and I just started dropping bars. And this guy was like, I'm signing you and shit. This the first time I got signed or whatever. It's like, I'm signing you. And then like, I went and hang out with them. They didn't record no music though. They just had me like, rapping and shit. And then another time, I know it sounds really fucked up, but it is what it is. Like, like every couple months or every couple like years or so, something would just happen where I had to rap. Same shit, I was getting off school one day. And it's funny because the guy who I ended up going to the studio with ended up being like one of my like, cool, close friends and one of my OGs. Um, I was just walking home from school and this guy was like, yo, what are you doing? Like, this is I'm black and I was in this place called Austria, Ontario. He was like, what are you doing? He was like, can you rap? I'm like, I can rap. He's like, yo, like, we just opened up a studio. So they brought me into this, like, store. And rest in peace to the guy. I forgot his name top of my head right now. But rest in peace to him. At top of the store, it was like a clothing store slash, like, you get whatever the fuck you want there. And in the basement was like a, a fucking um, studio. I went to the studio. I dropped, some, I dropped my first track, and then I went to like back home to this guy named Nathan. He had this thing called BIY, and he had a studio at his house, but he didn't make it fully yet. He, he made beats though. He was just like, "Oh, you made this song," and I was like, "Yeah." So he made a studio, and then if you go on like SoundCloud, you'll find Gangsta uh, by A P B Z Z Y Dash T Mancho. That's the first recorded song I ever put out. He was just like, "Yo, make a song," and we just started rapping. I feel like that was a long ass answer, but like real shit, like it was kind of a process. Like it was basically, to be honest, I never really was like, yo, I want to rap. There was never a time when I was like, I want to rap. So it was kind of just like rap. <laughs> and you know me, right? Like even when I make my songs now, someone will be like rap, and I'll just start rapping. I'm like, okay, this is the song. <laughs> you know? Or a Call of Duty. I guess. Um, Call for APC. I'm like itching myself and shit. Yo, last night was crazy, alright? For last night was kind of a mess, but it wasn't bad. Nothing happened really. The, 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 the liquor was definitely talking last night, bro. This guy, <laughs> this game is on some shit. Fuck, I mean, man. Am I even allowed saying this stuff? Or you can say like a gist of it. Don't say any names or anything. All right, so someone in the podcast. <laughs> was smoking a joint in the McDonald's. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Please tell me we yeah. did. Oh, we gotta put that in the vlog. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, there was another time um, someone in the podcast. <laughs> Actually, I'm not gonna say this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say it while like, I woke up this morning. That's what I thought you were gonna say. <laughs> I don't remember why the liquor was talking. I forgot <laughs> I even did that. I let him join McDonald's. Oh, right? okay. Classic me. Yeah. I used to smoke blunts in there and I ran and get kicked out. It was like a thing back in the day. Hey, well, a couple friends of ours were like, Happy just, birthday, Marco. I would just walk outside and he's like making out with some Shout girl. Out and I'm like, oh. And then, yeah, I just turned around. Well, first we were chatting. And then they were making out, and then I just turned around and I was like, alright, let them do their thing. And then he didn't come home with us, he just he went somewhere else. Yo, I just know this is supposed to be a food, a food podcast as well, so I'm going to give out a basic ass recipe. Yo, if you want to make some motherfucking Alfredo sauce, you're going to need some Parmesan cheese, some butter, some flour, and some heavy cream, right? Maybe some salt, pepper, some herbs if you're feeling bougie. 
right? First thing you're gonna do is take a spoonful of motherfucking butter and put that shit in the pan. What I like to do to make sure that it's like not burning, put a little bit of olive oil, canola oil, just so the butter don't burn. Don't put a whole bunch, you know what I'm saying? Then you're gonna add your flour, make like a little like crack paste or some shit, you know what I'm saying? Whip it up. After that, you gonna fucking add um cream. But you ain't gonna dump all the cream in though, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna like slowly add the cream in like little splash splash, get it hot, splash splash, get it hot. Once you got like a nice thick creamy fucking buttery fucking whatever the fuck you wanna call it, you're gonna throw two cups a motherfucking cheese and you know, I forgot I should have told y'all like you want to put like a liter of cream to like two cups of cheese get that shit nice and reduced down and you got yourself some grub to get down you know what I'm saying shout out shout out chef Pat Newman as well for the inspiration on that little recipe you feel me yeah I don't know what the fuck I was doing but we did it right <laughs> <laughs> How crazy is that? Cringe level 1 to 10. Parmesan Reggiano or Parmesan Madonna? Uh, I, I, I don't give a fuck. Just cheese. I use mozzarella sometimes. Is it even different? Is that the same cheese? To be honest with you, I don't really know. I just know cheese. If I, if I, knew, if I knew, I'd tell you. <laughs> I like Padano because I feel like Padano has like a bitter taste to it a little bit. Then the Parmesan is kind of like, not sweet, it still has that like, mm, but the Padano has like a bitter taste to it, I feel like. Yeah, I like the real Parm versus the fake Parm. Fake Parm's good on pizza though. Just that like powder shit. Just yeah. Like, it's a good shit. I should say that. Oh uh, man, you know what? Get, I shout out, Parm sometimes. shout out to Pizza Nova. Um, I literally ate Pizza Nova until I almost died of appendicitis one time. See? I know you gotta go, so I don't want to take more of your time. So actually, yeah, I have to eat. You know what I'm Another thing about the industry is, ironically, you're surrounded by food all day, every day, but you don't really eat. Sometimes you do, sometimes you gorge, but sometimes, like, or splurge, sorry. But other, other times, just, like, don't really eat, so... I have to force myself to eat something just because I know my body won't needs it. Wait, this has been Shaq in the Woods. Episode 1 official. I'm APZ about Paper Z. Instagram at the real APZ. Luis, give them your name and she's the photographer Instagram again. Luis, the photographer. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for watching. It's been Shaq in the Woods, babe.